Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today we're going to discuss how to create your own name tags in Adobe InDesign. You often see lanyard name tags used in conferences or festivals, music concerts, sporting events. You could use them in the workplace, so people might use them as their ID for their workplace. So there's many uses for name tags. We're going to build our own in InDesign. So as you can see on my screen here, I have a landscape version of my name uh, tag and then a portrait vertical version of it. So I'm going to show you how to use a specific tool in InDesign to create document pages, uh, different orientations. So you don't have to do this in multiple documents. Okay. So let's, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to go up to file and we're going to create a new document. And I've already have my settings here all set. So in your width field, you want it to be four inches. In your height, you want it to be three. Let's change it to landscape orientation. We want two pages and facing pages off. Okay, we do not want facing pages on. And then the margins down below, we want them set to 0 0.25 inches, okay? So those are the settings you want for this specific name tag that we're going to create here. So I'm going to hit create and there's my blank page here. Pages. I have two there. Okay. And so the first step I want to show you is how to create, uh, change one of the pages to portrait. Okay. So the tool you would use for that is called the page tool. So it's on your main toolbar on the left and it's the third tool from the top. So I'm going to click that. And you'll notice now my page has kind of a highlighted box around it. I could bring in these, um, I could bring in these handles and make it custom size, drag the handles as you wish. But in this case, I'm just going to go to my second page and I'm going to click it with my page tool. And up top here, you have the width, uh, dimension and the height. So in this case, I just want to reverse them. So I'm going to make the, the width of it three and I'm going to make the, the height of it four and I'm gonna hit tab and you can see my page changed to um, a portrait orientation but the same dimensions now in newer vert in the newest version of InDesign what I found is pretty cool as well if you're in the properties panel you can simply just go in here and designate which page you want to change or alter and then you can simply just click the icon landscape or portrait or you can also just change the dimensions here. So it's a good way of using the page tool, but there's an added uh, feature here now with the properties panel where you can change that on the fly as well, okay? So now I have two pages that are uh, different orientations and that's okay. I encourage you to do this in what you're designing, especially if it's something like a business card or a name tag, something that you're designing that's vertical and um, and horizontal so you don't have to create multiple documents because that could be tedious as well okay so let's get started here I'm just gonna go to my layers panel and create two extra layers first layer is gonna be called background color the second layer is gonna be called photo and the third layer will be called type and I'm going to just go and load I saved a color swatch here that I'm going to need. So I'm going to load that. That's the color that I'm going to use here in this case. Okay. So as you know, name tags can vary. They could just be all text. They could be text and graphics. You can add a small image, an ID image of yourself to, to clarify who this, this uh, name tag is for. In this case, I'm going to kind of use the combination of the two and have a name tag with one of the, the, the guest speakers, I guess, for the event, um, and then play with typography as well, okay? So let's just go back to our image here, our other document, and let's grab our rectangle frame tool, and I'm basically just gonna cover that entire first page. Just draw out a box. I'm gonna click on my direct or selection tool, go to my swatches, I'm gonna give it a fill color of that Pantone red that I just created here, and then, um, I also have here, so I'm on my background there. I want that on the background there. Good. So I have 
my color applied and I'm just gonna go to my CC libraries here and I have a graphic that I've created um, that I've already put into my library and I'm just gonna drag it onto my page here. And I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lay it over my, um, my color bar there, or my color box, and I've applied an effect to it. So in my last tutorial, I showed you how to play with blending modes. So I've applied a, an overlay to this specific, oops, to this graphic, I've applied an overlay, but if it was normal, it'd come in black, okay? So once I put an overlay on it, it blends right into my background. So now that I have this set that's basically going to be the background of my, my card or my name tag. I can go ahead and lock that now. And next thing I want to do is import my image. Okay. So I'm going to go to my back to my um, rectangle frame tool and just draw out another box. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. I'm going to do command D and I'm going to go find, I'm going to go find uh, lanyard and I want this image here okay I'm gonna go ahead and just make that to fit for now I'm gonna adjust this box to fill my entire page and then I'm just gonna bump it up in size shortcut for bumping up photos if I haven't explained that in previous uh, tutorials which I think I have is click on the little donut here with your selection tool option command or control uh, com uh, shift control on, on a Windows and just greater than or less than okay so I'm going to make that fit here and then I'm just gonna bring this down bring her down okay and the blending mode I used in this case is multiply. Oops. Multiply. And I made it 90, 90%. Okay. So that's it. That's going to be the base of my name tag now. So I have her there and I have a nice patterned graphic and a nice color to go with it. I can go ahead and lock photo. I'm just going to go to my first uh, document here. I'm going to copy over the the, um, the name of the event and when it is. So I copied it from one document. I can put it in here and just uh, do Command V, or I can do Shift Option Command V. Oh, I can't do that. I'm sorry. So let me just paste it. Oh, let's see here. Oh, it's locked. Let's see if I unlock that layer here, maybe. You know what, maybe I'll just create a new one. Let's do that. Before I go any further, and I can't stress this enough, is I'm gonna go to layout and let's create. I can't create a guide here, can I? Let's go to, let's go to master page here. And will it let me there? Okay, create a guide on the master page that is four by four. How's that? Let's go like so. Click on my first page, and there we go. Okay, so my first page is set here. And I'm going to be using the Gotham typeface for this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to lock the other two layers for now and work on my type layer. And I'm going to create a box here and let's call it uh, 2019 design summit highlight it I didn't set up a style guide for this so I'm doing everything manually and that's okay Gotham black and let's make it uh, 24 28 20 that works there I want to make this type white but I do want to make the design maybe uh, blue, kind of like I did in the other version. I do want to edit that blue because it's not vibrant enough. So if you want to add, edit, if you ever want to edit a uh, 
uh, swatch globally, just double click it. And I have some other, um, let me go to the, this Pantone, search a more vibrant blue. That works for me. Okay, so there we go. I have that, the name of the event. And I'm, instead of dragging, or instead of creating another text box, I'm just gonna, I would usually just drag another copy. And this will be June 20th to 24th. And we're going to select that and make it 10 point. And instead of black, Let's make it just Gotham Bold. And the event is actually going to be in Chicago, Illinois. Okay, and that's a little too big still, so I'm just going to actually maybe make that. Let's make it book, and yeah, that's a good size for it. Just add a little bit more contrast to it. gonna maybe bring this up a bit and that's okay if it's overlapping your image I'm just gonna click my image and let's move her to the left just a little bit okay and I can lock that again and then what I'm gonna do is let's copy this again just that's option drag or alt and drag to create another copy and her name was Tamara Frost. What I did here on this end here, in this version, is I created a highlight on that. So let's do that. Did I bold? Yeah, let's make that bold just to make it stand out. In this case, I do want it to be bold. Okay. Let's make that fit and I'll show you how to highlight this okay I mean I could draw another box behind it and then reverse the colors but if I go to just highlight it and let's open um, let's go to type and paragraph right here it says shading go ahead and click that and you can see it it creates a little um, background for you um, so I would I could just click my text now and go to my um, my swatches and make the text black and maybe 95% black. See how that looks? Looks pretty good. I'm gonna highlight it and let's see if I can. Okay, so I want to baseline shift it, but it's too much if I do a full full uh, one point or um, one. So I'm gonna do let's do minus 0.5. Let's maybe do minus 0.7 right here. This is your baseline shift. I'm just gonna maybe minus 0.7. Watch what happens when I hit tab to my name. Okay, I just wanna kind of center that into the highlight the best I can. Okay, so there you go. That's how you would do that with the highlight version. And if you want the highlight off, just hi highlight your text, go back to your paragraph panel and just uncheck that, okay? You can also change the color of your highlight here as well. I just leave mine black, which is fine. Uh, let's see here. Okay, what else did I have here? And then just her position. So again, I'll just create another one of that. And then just do graph. She's a graphic designer. And just make it a little bit smaller, maybe eight point or so. Now obviously I'm doing this on the fly just to show you for this tutorial. I would spend a little bit more time in aligning things, but that's pretty close. See how I picked this guide to anchor everything to? Kind of so you have a nice um, a nice straight edge on your type. Okay, so now that I have this all set, okay, it's only a matter of copying things over and then just kind of rejigging of, uh, your content on the portrait version of your of your uh, name 
tag okay so let's go back to our layers unlock those actually I do want to lock photo and type for now I'm gonna highlight the pattern and my background and just do command C and then go to your second page command V and in this case I want to rotate it so rotate it to rotate just put your cursor in one of the corners and rotate but also hold shift while you're doing it and it, it will it will rotate in uh, 45 degree increments okay so I'm going to control Z and that's what I want I'll lock that I'll grab my photo here yeah command C go to my second page command V and in this case I'm just gonna have to readjust my image here I want her a lot bigger, okay? So, something like that. Let's take a look at this as a reference point. Yeah. Just move it to the side a little bit, okay? And then I can grab this stuff. Let's lock our image, grab our type. My guides are all messed up on this part, so let me just see if I can. Let's clear the guides here. Okay, so I'm gonna just grab my text here and then put that over there. My guides are on and they're kind of screwed up on my second page here so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it for now okay okay so that's how you would create a name tag in InDesign using two versions, uh, the portrait and landscape, making one portrait, one landscape, and changing them using the page tool, or going to your properties panel, and uh, with the page tool, click on the page, and then you can alter it that way as well. Okay, so that's today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye now.